Good morning, everybody. How's... Oh, what's that device? I am very sorry. No, I can't. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, bollocks to you, rotate device. Get out of here. Move that a bit forward. What's up everybody, it's Dan Walls here again from Illumination Wall Art. Merry Christmas. New Year is coming up next couple of days. What I'm working on here is the uh, Sundle Hospital Dinosaur Room. Uh, if you've been following the series and looking at my work, you'll know I'm working for Sunderland Hospital, doing 17 rooms in total. I am now on with the fourth. And I thought I'd just do a new video, just letting everyone know how things are going. This is the start of it. This is uh, something that's more of a trompe l'oeil. Um, going to go in a section of the hospital above a sink, so it looks like the dinosaur's burst its way through with its eye, and above that is going to have its claws coming in through another hole in the wall. Um, it would be a full piece, but um, it's going to be worked around uh, different bits in the hospital, containers, um, electric sockets, plugs, all sorts of stuff. So I'm just doing bits bit by bit. This is a uh, a rough cut. It's near enough 4x4 four four feet uh, on Corex board and I've just been cracking on with this for the last couple of uh, couple of minutes. Well, a couple of minutes, about the last hour. So, as you can see, we're kind of get it, getting where it wants to go. You'll have to excuse me, I've been drinking rum. So I'm a little bit tiddly. But what I'm doing now is I am going to show you the importance of highlights. Highlighting is one of the best things you can do because it transforms a piece. Uh, it's great for composition. You can use darkness first and then bring it out from dark to light. And it really builds on what you're doing. So, as you can see here, I've started adding a few little nubs and little bumps here in the scales where the light would hit it anyway. Because it's going to be outside and it's also going to be inside. You know what I mean? So you want to get the light coming from the inside hitting it and also from the outside because it would probably be lit up when it's going through. So the light will be coming in from behind the brick wall and also down over. So you'll see it face on and you'll also see the light coming in from a different source. So, we're cracking on again. I am going to get the loop out. We're going with loop regular blank or white. Um, it's very, very bright and it's lovely stuff. I'm not using gloss at the moment because I just want to put some very light highlights in these scales. So on the bumps, you see I've curved some card here. And that curve will create the light curve. It's um, going to be spraying onto the actual card itself and not onto the canvas, so it bounces off. So if you watch in here, if we get involved, just on this little nub here, just spraying it in like that. A little bit here and there. And we can concentrate it further where we want it to go. So we're not being massively precise with it. But we're just going to go in where we kind of think we should be. And it just builds and builds and builds slowly to get that look to it. The light coming off the scales. And also there's going to be a bit in the lights here, but I think later on what we'll do is we'll do that with gloss and on, on the end of a brush. To try and get it going. It should be good. Thank you for tuning in. Whoever's there, by all means, give the video a like and subscribe. Leave me a comment. I'll try and read them as I go. That'd be great. But we're just building up slowly, building it and building it. So it eventually comes together and looks more... Authentic and realistic if a dinosaur can indeed be looking realistic. But you see there already it's just making it pop a bit more. So this nose, what would be the nose and the side of its eye, the curve, would be further forward. Just gives it that uh, that look that we're looking for. We're just gonna be shining it in there and using the side of this card as a stencil. If you want to extend it out, we just move it a little bit further out and we can get the thickness, the line that we're looking for there. So it's really starting to come together. It's I'm just kind of picking and choosing where I want to put it, really. And so the reference I'm using is off clip art, but I've changed it up and I've done my own thing, but like I did with a lot of my stuff, I use it as a reference image and build it up. Because sadly, I can't go out and photograph dinosaurs anymore. They were around when I was a little lad, obviously, running around in the wild, but not now, you know. Go. 
So it's got that, starting to get that real depth, it's starting to move itself out. You know, like looking through the mouth of a cave and you can see any light in the background would really be emulated by how dark the uh, place would be and it would pick up on all the light coming through. I don't want to do too much here because I don't want it to stray too far from the snout where the real highlights would be. And we're just going to build it and build it and build it and eventually it should come through and look how we want it to look. Yeah, I think we're really starting to get there. I'm very tempted to put a white line in here to separate the uh, pupil from the actual eyebrow, but I don't want to do that because I think it might mess it up a little bit. Good thing to do with this is kind of go with your gut, um, work on bits, and if you think it doesn't look right, then it won't look right. Kind of trust your instincts a little bit here. It's also very messy because I've uh, used a green board. And I spread it white. Matches the colour of the wall in the hospital where I've sprayed the shading in. There is a little bit of overspray, so I'm just wanting to have rid of that. But it's also messy because it's a hole in the wall, so you know you, you can have a bit of cracked plaster and you can have a bit of like freedom with it to make it look a little bit more of how you want to go with it. There we go, looking nice. Just getting rid of some of these little bits, just to patch it. You can't, you probably couldn't see it on the camera, but um, up close and personal is where I want it to be. So, get it looking nice. Just pop this in here like that. Yeah, it's very cool. So we're starting to get where we want to go. Really, it's really starting to become what we want it to do, and uh, making it grow as a piece in general. Um, there is a little bit of light around this side here. But I don't want to go too mental with it. I think I should probably use the gloss on the end of the brush for that. And I am going to do one more ridge in here just to hold the line around and extend this in. Into here. So we know that that's where the uh, nose is. There. So we're getting that real idea of depth and the eyes proper popping and looking forward. Who's this? How's it going down? The video is flipped 90 degrees. Right on, mate. Not a problem. Hey, okay, bud. I like doing it this because it's easy to edit, but obviously we're here. Thank you for that, mate. Much appreciated. Does that look better there? It must look better there. <laughs> it has to now. I've flipped it the right way around. Oh, I'm such a doyle. I'm sorry. I'll just get this in here like that. Whoa. Ah, because I've touched the easel and everything's gone the shit. Ooh. Thanks, Ryan, mate. How was your Christmas? You have a good time? Here we go. So now we've got a bit of gloss on the go. I'm gonna give it a go around the top ends here, just so we can get a get a look in here. Yeah, that's starting to really pop now, just with a little bit of gloss as always. Put a bit of gloss in it, and it just does what you want it to do, and it'll look mint. So we're definitely getting there. I'm just gonna put some scaling in around the eye. Wanting to do. And we're just curving it just to create the idea that it's got some curve to it. And it'll also give the eye a bit of wetness so it'll like kind of look the part. I'm going to put a little line just along here like that. Yeah, that's getting it. I'm kind of just making things up now. I do have a reference on my laptop which is behind us, but to be fair, I'm just kind of going off what I think now. You know, sort of using my instincts a little bit to kind of get what I want out of it. And if you see here where you've got the little curves, you can add the gloss to that as well, so it gives it a bit more realism, makes it a bit more solid. If anyone's new with the stream, hello, my name is Dan Walls. I run a company called Illumination Wall Art. I am currently working on 17 rooms for Sunderland Hospital. It's all done on Corex board. Uh, which is what the, it's the plastic for sale sign stuff and um i decided to document it all by doing a lot of live streams and a lot of videos on the youtube channel and see if i can generate some uh, interest in it i started out seven years ago kind of working for myself uh, painting murals for kids bedrooms and from then i just have not stopped i do all sorts of stuff i work for 
nightclubs, I work in restaurants, I work in pubs and clubs and gyms and all sorts of places. I paint the sides of vehicles, I paint the sides of buildings, cars, uh, burger vans, all sorts of stuff. And I'm just wanting to document my life a little bit just to show people what I do. Uh, maybe do some art streams on here. I want to try and get people on my YouTube to do uh, some artist talks and podcast. So if anyone is interested, then by all means get in touch. I'm also available on Instagram and Twitter and everything like that. Um, but I want to populate it. So if you guys want to subscribe, that would be really good because I'm trying to get as much views as I can so I can get super chat, maybe get something going on with donations. That would be really cool. One thing I don't want to do is I have to end up on stream because I want to kind of keep YouTube the way it is. Going off my uh, initial thoughts, I am going to trust my gut instinct and put a line in here because I kind of want to now. Just to give it that kind of curve there. That's better. Yeah, we're getting there now. While we're here, I am just going to quickly link this stream to my Facebook. So if you give me one minute, guys, I will get that sorted out. Do excuse it. I will just share it through my Facebook. Oh, there we are. Man was good, mate. Yeah, um, I was just having a good time seeing my old friends, really. I had a friend come up from New York who I haven't seen in like about four years. Him and his wife were here. Spent it with my girlfriend and went to the pub with some old mates. And it was a really good fun. Just uh, spending time with my family, having a couple of days off, so... Just send this to my Facebook live now on YouTube. There we go, that has been sent to my Facebook. Excellent. There's these ridges here that I don't like too much, they're a little bit like uh, too thick, maybe, for my liking. What I'll do is I might spray them out and then go in again with some. Uh, some dark spray paint just to make it pop a bit more. I will move the reference a little bit closer. And I'll show you guys as well. This is the reference here that I knocked up uh, using two bits of clip art. And the laptop's gone off. How wonderful. There you go. So you can see there's not much of a difference between the two. I'm just kind of going off uh, what I think, really. And I'm just kind of building it up very, very slowly and having, having a good time. So I'll put on the chair beside me so I've got a bit more of an idea of reference. And then we can paint some proper scales in and have a bit of fun with it really. I do excuse if the camera wobbles, I'm balancing it on an easel and I'm kind of walking backwards and forwards a lot so it, it might look a bit dodgy. But you know, that's the magic of uh, painting. I'm just going to layer these in here and make them a little bit thicker. Put the curve in and remember to leave a gap between so you've got the idea of a curve. And then we'll just pop this in right now. So it just starts to add that bit of wetness to the eye. So it creates that sort of look that we're looking for. So it's got like. There we go. Proper starting to come together, it's good fun. Uh, we'll just keep working this out. So we want to put it a little bit on here. It's nice to have the fade of the spray paint, the softness, but then we want if we want to put a bit of harsh lighting in, like the whole scales, this gloss kind of does that thing for us. So it really gives it that depth that we're looking for. Proper good fun doing this, like. Um, I've got a whole room to do. And the girl, my girlfriend should be coming at some point soon to do a few big boards, like big brachiosauruses and stuff and pterodactyls because she loves dinosaurs so she was like really interested in doing this. So I thought I'd start it off with a small piece and see how we went on from there. Proper coming together, very nice. I might have to do some dry brushing in some of the scales as well just to kind of put some lighter browns in here because it's very dark in places. But we'll build it up as we go, that's the best thing about this, it's kind of a, a gradual process, you can't look for perfection straight away, you kind of got to achieve it. In here as well we want to just make some shapes in here. Brilliant. Look what we're getting there now.
Yeah, we're getting to where we need to be. I am going to mix up some light brown now, some light brown acrylic, uh, and just dry brush over some of the scales to get that kind of blend because it's very, very harsh at the moment. It's like, it needs to be a little bit subtle in places, nothing too major, but we don't want it to be too full on. Well, yeah, yeah, that's a very dark brown, so a bit of white in there would, wouldn't go amiss at all. So I'm just mixing up acrylic here. There's a lot of black in it though. It's more of a, this is more of like a, a light gray brown color. I'm not sure if I like that. I have to mix up some fresh. So what I'll do is I'll go with a brown and a yellow. I'm just using your regular all, all day acrylic here. Just to keep the costs down as always because I use a lot of it, like tons of the stuff. And to be fair, if you're using loads of it, you want to use whatever's good and thick, but not too expensive, because you'll end up breaking the bank on just using paint that is effectively all the same. So, got a bit of yellow in here. Just blasting that yellow in there with a little bit of a that grey colour, making kind of a ochre sort of colour, like a, like a minging sort of green yellow. What we want to do is add some brown umber, and I've got it somewhere, I've got a whole box full of paint down here. Uh, there's a copper, which is nice, but we don't want to go metallic with it, I don't think. Not yet, anyway. Don't want to add any metallics in there, but this is just your regular Wilkinson's acrylic. And I want to use a little bit of brown, but I'm going to mix it up in, in with this yellow. It'll take a while because there's loads of yellow, but we don't want it too dark. We just want it like subtle. There we go. Brilliant. So we've got like this kind of like a light kind of chocolate brown going on. What we want to do with this is we just want to use a little bit, just quite sparingly. So the best thing to do is kind of, well, I use my hands, but you should probably use some kind of toilet roll or whatever, kitchen roll. Get the excess off your brush. You don't want loads. You only want a little bit and then eventually... You want to use the very dregs of the paint and you just want to dry brush it in so very quickly just blast it over very loosely and you can kind of get a blend of what you want. Be careful to avoid the brush as well, well avoid the gloss because the, gl the, gross, the, gross, the gloss can go in and uh, ruin the brush so you just want to take it easy with that. Work up to the line and just very lightly just dust it in. Blast it around and dust it in because then you can very softly build up the tone as you go. And we just want to go in these scales where there's not much else happening. And then you can just get this kind of an idea of a subtlety with the colour blends. So it's starting to come along nice, and you can even add more uh, more tones in. Like along here, I can add yellows and creams in these bits as well, just to break it up a little bit. So you can give it like in sections, so it goes eye, then the black area around it, then this bit, and then further over. So you're kind of building like, it's kind of like how you build up a landscape. You go back around mid-ground, foreground, but with this, it's all one image. But if you think of that like the sun in a cave looking through, and this is what's right in front of you, Think of yourself as a little person that's walking through here, you know, and you're climbing over rocks. What colour would they be? How would the light hit them? How difficult would they be to climb over, you know? Would you be able to see? Is it too dark? Think of it that way. Think of each painting. I know it's very Bob Ross of me to think this way, but think of each painting as like an adventure that you're going on and you're moving into the land. You're, in, you're moving into its space a little bit. As you can see, it's just kind of building up nice, nice and slowly here. Just to give it a little bit more of what we're looking for.
I am starting to run out of paint again because, uh, like I said, I did use up loads of it. But you can always go back. I mixed up tons of the stuff. So go back into here. And where I haven't mixed up masses and you've left little bits, you can always go back into the darker stuff on the side here. So I can use a little bit of dark if I wanted it. Just for these cracks here, so where the line's black, you can always put very close to it a line of dark brown to just to even it out ever so slightly and make a new scale in there and under here. So I'm getting there. Yeah, if anyone's got any questions, please please feel free to ask them, and I'll see what I can do about that. If there's any other artists in here that want to collaborate, then by all means get in touch, guys. It'd be wonderful to do some painting with other people and uh, teach and learn as we go. That'd be really good. Really starting to get somewhere with this now. Really starting to enjoy myself. Thank you, Buzz Killington. That's actually a great name. Um, how did you get into the business? I've been painting and drawing since I was a little kid, and I've loved it. Absolutely loved painting and drawing. But um, I was no good at anything else. I was diagnosed as dyslexic, well, statemented with being dyslexic from the age of eight, so told I'd never probably be able to read and write or whatever. And I like drawing. I just really like drawing and colouring in because there was no rules. I was like, I wasn't kind of... I was given more encouragement to paint and draw as a little kid from my parents and from teachers and everything. And I got to middle school, like, uh, comprehensive, and I thought, why not just do it? Just do it for a career and really look at it. And from then, I just decided to hone my skills on it because I was crap at everything else. And I just went for it. And then um, got terrible GCSEs. I don't know where you're from, but GCSEs in the UK are like... Uh, what we go through in high school to um, get us into a decent job. Did that, got the bare minimum, and then I went to college to study art, and from then I just did it every single day. Uh, I got out of college, went to university uh, to take fi fine art further, and then I uh, got out of university, worked a lot of terrible jobs, because getting a job in art is an absolute nightmare. It is the worst thing you can possibly try and do is get a job as an, as a, as an artist. And um, worked loads of terrible jobs, became an art teacher for a couple of, a couple of years, got my qualifications, started tattooing, I was a tattooist apprentice, all the real foils who I hated, um, started this on the side, and did the business, just started a business painting kids' bedrooms, and then I haven't looked back since, started doing kids' bedrooms, and then um, got bigger and bigger as I went, and every year I do more and more, and I've worked for the Duke of Devonshire, I've painted for Eddie Hall, the UK's strongest man, I've painted for a celebrity chef called Andrew Nutter, it's just good, you know what I mean, not that I'm looking for fame or anything like that, because the best thing to do is just love what you do, I do this every single day because I love painting and drawing, if I made no money at it whatsoever and died poor and penniless, I'd have died happy because I got to paint a dinosaur, you know, rather than working, so there you go Buzz, that's, that's kind of how I did it, not to get in too much detail, but yeah man. If anyone wants to be an artist, don't look to do it to make to make a fortune. It will not happen. It, it, I'm I'm extremely lucky to do what I do and make money with it because there's so many guys who are brilliant artists who are way better than me, who work in Tesco's or work at McDonald's or something. You know? No, dude, it isn't. It's a nightmare. It really is. It's hard work, but you just gotta love it. You gotta love what you do. 
I think I read I read one of Banksy's books and Bank and Banksy said um so don't look to make money and become famous from your art. I says art fame is like a byproduct to art. I says it's like going to a restaurant and eating a really good meal just so you can have a poo, you know? And I thought that's actually a very clever way of putting it. Because if you don't love what you do, then why are you doing it, you know? You have to have a passion for it. I'm good at washing dishes as well, but I don't want to do it for a living anymore, you know? I'm a, I'm a brilliant KP. I can chop onions like nobody else, but I don't want to do it for a living. So yeah, I'm just going over this these lines in here with this new colour because I quite like it. And what I'll do in a minute, I'll put some dark shade in it to kind of like bring it back to where it where it was. But I'm kind of liking it. I think the orange in the eye is great for this kind of brown. It kind of like uh, they complement each other really well. And I'm just dry brushing it here into the dark, like right into the dark bits, just so you get like a really sort of a natural fade of where the light would kind of diminish. I'm hoping at some point soon the girlfriend will give me a ring on her way because she'll flip when she sees this because she loves dinosaurs. I might see if I can get Liv to do, well, Liv my girlfriend, I might see if I can get her to do a bit on camera because, like, she's a bit shy, but, I don't know, you guys, you guys would like Liv, she's really cute. I'm just going to bash this in here a little bit. getting there now so yeah this is not as detailed as the rest of it but it will be very soon I'm gonna put a few more bits in I'm just gonna check the reference and see where we're going with that yeah I'm gonna put a few more bits in here just suggestions in the top bit here where it's dark I'm just gonna put a few scales in like that just to suggest that they're there just so it fades off a little bit and disperses into the top of the dinosaurs like if I have its head where it goes into the uh, goes into the darkness. Yeah, guys, if you want to populate the stream a bit and put it about on social media, on Facebook and stuff, I would be very, very grateful. It would be classed if that could happen. Just to get a few more people looking in and subscribing, that would be really cool. joined a few groups on Facebook now. I've joined um, Elite Twang Masters, which is a group for graffiti artists, by graffiti artists, which is great because I'm wanting to get some podcast kind of stuff going where I have people in and we interview each other and talk to each other. I'm off to a session, like a jam session, with some uh, graph writers in May. And I'm going to bring the camera and we're going to do some interviews and stuff and uh, see what we can learn from then. So that'll be great to get, get involved with that. A bit of a Q and A session with some guys and see what they reckon to uh, a guy who isn't really a writer but paints like I do, using spray paint as a medium. Yeah, we're really starting to get somewhere now. I'm really enjoying myself. That'll be great. Yeah, that'll be great, Ryan. I'm just wanting to get more people involved, man, because I know so many artists who are brilliant but can't get anywhere. You know, people can't pay attention to them because they don't know they exist, and it's so sad. But I'd love to get some podcasts on the go and just, just talk art, you know what I mean? I've got so many friends who are amazing artists and have, you know, who just get nowhere. It's a real shame. I'm just hoping that if I become, I don't know, not become big, but get kind of noticed for what I do, I can I can give some spotlight to some other artists who are really cool. You know, people who I look up to and respect enormously. I'm not going too full on with these scales. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. Just popping it in here and there. Just going to build it and build it and build it. Buzz Killington, where did you get your name from? Is it off like Family Guy or something? Or off Simpsons? I definitely remember hearing it in like a cartoon. Like Sir Buzz Killington, but I don't know where it's from. 
Definitely rings a bell though. Subuz, Subuz Killington. really looking nice now I'm starting to get into this I think with a lot of these scales they're a little bit too light but I'll uh, put some transparent black in there now and just kind of hide them off a little bit just so we can create that level of depth that we've been looking for I'm just gonna put a big scale in here a big round one in there and then down to star with that one Pretty sweet. I'm happy with that. So now I'm gonna get myself some rum. I'll be two minutes. Yeah, if any, if I don't know if you guys are even old enough to drink, but if you do like rum, I'd uh, recommend the Kraken because it's very, very nice, solid black rum, and this uh, this big octopus on the side, this big squid, is absolutely gorgeous. So I might get it as a tattoo at some point. Cause it's beautiful. Cheers, guys. I am by no way endorsed by crack and rum, but uh, hint hint, all loop spray pin. So, now I'm going to add some transparent black, which is, if you've seen this uh, cast before, this stuff's brilliant. It's just loop spray paint, but they've done their own version of transparent black, which is like shading in a can. And it's just very, very watered down black. And it's just lovely to get like some real depth. So if I wanted on the underside of the scale, see, to give each one a little shadow, I'll just very lightly just pop this in, going with the under end of the uh, spray. And if you spray over it, it doesn't matter too much because acrylic's like pretty good at like adhering this water and wet paint anyway. So it just gives it this like this depth here. So I can just blast over all of it really. And it hides it off lovely. And even here on this eyebrow, I can pop it in here and just put some random shapes in like this, this random whips. Because that then looks like scales. And it just roughly gets this idea that that's where the lines are, that's where he's eyebrows are. You can work back in here as well and fill this area up with black. And that just builds it, builds it, makes it darker, really makes it pop, really makes it dead pretty. If indeed a T-Rex can be pretty. Pop a little bit in here like that. And under there like this. Just gonna step back and take a look. Yeah, we're definitely getting where we want to be. It's definitely looking nice. I think we need to go back in with a bit more gloss just to put in a few more little bits that we like the look of. I'll just get the reference up again. I see where we want to go. So I think we need some black lines in here. So I'll put a bit more black in it. What we want to do is just pop them in here. So generally, just putting black lines in just to get the details back where we want to go. That's that one section there. And then we want to put a curve in here. And 
risking this kind of going grey. I don't really want that. So I might have to add a bit more black into this mix. So I'm kind of my black inky kind of mix. So we'll go with some more black paint. On the side here, that's what we want. This stuff's slash black acrylic, but it's very watered down. It's got like the consistency of like ink, so it's like drawing with an ink brush. Kind of doing like a sumier sort of thing. So that kind of curves into there, which is alright. And then we've got this bump here, like that. Bump there, and a bump there. The spray paint still is a little bit sticky, where it's not completely dry, because it's freezing out here. If you guys are in the UK, you'll like know at this time it's like minus one outside. And it's snow everywhere. But I'm quite comfortable, quite warm in my little studio, so I'm very thankful to have it at the moment. Just pop this in and keep some curves in it. There we go, so we're getting there. And then these things kind of go off to like these bumps, these ridges. It kind of looks like intestine, it's got like bumps and like lumps everywhere. Looking nice, looking nice. I'm sorry if anyone's commenting and they can't answer because it got me back to the camera, but I'll see what I can do. I'll keep putting my head around every time. Uh, a bit more around here. That's nice and rough. I'm just going to fill in these gaps here and make these here more kind of solid black yeah that's what we wanted we wanted it to have these lines put back in we wanted it to be nice and thick and then we'll just flick these in like that and where it gets deeper where the shadows have been cast we can make these darker keep them dark and not bother dry brushing them too much Put some nice deep lines in this to really separate the sections off a little bit. We'll have rid of that white line as well because that's not right, that's a bit dodgy. In fact, where's that dry brushing bit? So if we get the darker brown again, like here, and just pop over that like this. That can go. And even if we go back into the lines and just use some of the black that's already there to, yeah, muck it up a little bit. Definitely starting to get somewhere with this now. I'm really starting to enjoy it. There's certain parts in this project that aren't really for me. And if anyone's an artist in here and you do get a commission, you'll know that you won't get to work on uh, everything you like. But best thing about what it is, if you do some stuff you don't like and what you're not used to, you will learn from the experience. And what I've learned is try and find bits in everything that you do that you can enjoy. Sometimes it's hard. I mean, having to paint minions is an absolute pain because I hate them, but, you know, I get a lot of people asking, oh, can you paint minions? And I'm like, yes, I can paint circles. I can paint yellow circles. It's not a problem. But, you know, you just kind of got to go with the flow. Do what you can to get paid because it's easier me painting minions for a day than having to work a full week <laughs> to earn the same amount of money. <clears throat> so it's best just doing something that, like, you know, that you can... You can endure for a while. We're definitely starting to get somewhere now. I'm really enjoying this. That's probably a bit too much paint. Oops. But we can always paint all of it. Best thing about this guys as well is not to worry, if you worry and panic that nothing's right and it's not perfect then don't worry, uh, painting is a process, it's not a final destination, it's not a goal, if you're always looking for the final thing then you'll never reach it, you've kind of just got to knuckle down and get on with it and break through barriers and just, if you think you've spent enough time on a painting give it another hour, give it another hour and just see how much you can do in that time. 
you'll ups, you, you'll shock yourself. Even if well, anything, I think like, if you're doing a drawing or if you're composing some music or you know playing it. Well, even if you play a video game, you know what I mean? If you try to level a character or whatever, give it another hour and just see how much you can do in that hour. It's a long time, you know? As long as you're productive and you're enjoying what you're doing, then it's great. So, we're definitely getting there now with this. I'm really starting to enjoy this. And build on the experience a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit in here just little bit and then along the top end of this ridge here I'm really starting to create some like movement in this now with the whole way it flows and blends it's absolutely class I think now to try and take the heaviness out of this brow as well I might have to Put some thicker lines in this side of the face. Last all in for now. There we go. Think, no, I don't want to be putting light in there really if I can avoid it. See what I mean about instinct going with your gut, like thinking, ah, eh, do I have to? That's how you can tell when a piece is getting near enough finish because you start, I start to panic then that, it's, that I'm doing too much and I'm going to ruin it. You know, because with it being a dinosaur and with it being quite a big thing. I am going to go now with the black again, right, where did I put that black, there it is in this cup here. And I'm just going to put some more lines in, like coming off the eyebrow where the scales would be, because then we can start to make it pop a bit more, and I can thin the lines out as we go further into the thing. Just so this whole section here is thick lined so it's coming right at you. So it's got that depth immediately rather it will complement massively to the uh the black and white composition that I've done. Create that depth that we're looking for. I'm going to try and avoid going over the white, but we can always put it in again later to make it jump and make it bounce. I'm just kind of Roughly thick line in it. I would normally do this with a black marker, but I've run out, so I'm hoping Liv can drop a few in when she lands. But for now, it doesn't matter too much. We can make do with the uh, thick black paint that we've got going on. This is looking so good. I'm really starting to enjoy myself now. Just like looking for lines now, kind of hunting for the ones that I want. And I'm just going to make them up a little bit really, I don't need to put loads in now because we've kind of got what we're looking for. There you go, Don Bluth. Good on that. There's your sharp tooth. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, just along this line here, just to separate it off a bit. Pop some scales in there. I'll just see what it's saying, two minutes. Ah, oh, go away. That's just my Facebook. What are you thinking, guys? Looking all right? Interested in this? Just let it generally pop some of these in. Just for easies. A little bit more white now, guys, and I think we're near enough ready to roll. I'm uh, really starting to like it. It's uh, got something to it, definitely. So I'll go back in with the spray paint again. I want to go in with my white and that bit of card if I can ever find it. Oh, where's the artwork going? Sorry. Um, I think I saw that, mate. Uh, where's the artwork going? This is part of an ongoing project for Sunderland Hospital. Um, they've hired me to paint 17 rooms and do it all on wooden, uh, not wooden boards, this plastic board stuff. This is the start of the dinosaur room. There's little bits of obstacles in the way. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Go to Sunderland Hospital, 17 rooms in total, all different themes. This is the start of the dinosaur room. And that's the crack there. Um, it's going to be good when I get it all finished. I completely forgot what Connor just said there. Sorry about that, mate. Oh yeah, other dinosaurs. We're gonna be doing the pterodactyls, we're gonna be doing the uh, Diplodocus or Brachiosaur, and loads of other ones, that names I can't pronounce. There's a few big full walls, like kind of like 10 feet by eight foot tall, so we're gonna do some massive ones on there, and do volcanoes in the background, and all your kind of generic kind of um, land before time, Don Bluth kind of design kind of work. But we're definitely uh, getting somewhere with it. It's looking brilliant. I'm getting very, very pleased with it. Where did I put that? What? There we go. For those of you that don't know me, I'm terribly disorganised. I put stuff down and I can never find it again. My mate Del, who you probably will see at some point, who paints with me quite a lot. Yeah, it's a brilliant project, man. Um, sometimes I go a couple of weeks without getting any work in at all. And... Um, I got a phone call one day off a guy called Mal, who's the owner, well not the owner, he's the uh, the head guy at the paediatrics ward, he said I've seen you work online on your website and we want to know if you can come in and do give us a quote, so I was like, yeah sweet, give him a decent quote on it and uh, yeah, got the job. So hired a unit and just cracked on, they normally work like in people's houses and in people's businesses but of course with it being a hospital, it being busy, I don't want to get spray paint everywhere, you know, sick kids breathing in paint fumes, so it's just better if we do it this way. But we're definitely getting there now. Just going to be adding a little bit more here and there to the curves in there. I'm going to put a little bit just in here. Maybe at the top where the light would hit it actually, on the top of this brow. Not too much, but just a little bit. 
Yeah, that's what I needed. Kind of what was saying, going off gut instinct, you know, doing what you what you what your brain tells you to do, <laughs> what you what your gut tells you you should be doing. And we don't want a lot. We just want to do a little bit, just to make the scales pop out a little bit more. Without going mental. Look at that depth. There we go. It's a looking pretty good. got a text well that's gonna do it for today guys thank you very much for tuning in asking the questions and getting involved i've been dan walls from illumination wall art if you want to keep watching me and checking stuff out uh i normally stream every couple of days doing all sorts of different things best way to do this of course is just to subscribe like on the videos and have a look around any questions at all by all means drop me a dm or find me on facebook you can find me at illumination wall art i'm also on instagram and Twitter and all that other stuff. So, thank you very much, guys. Much love, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.